What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And I got some awesome news for you guys. If you are an iPhone or iPad owner. So, a while ago, we got Delta, which is a multi-purpose emulator. And that took the internet by storm for like the longest time. But yesterday, we got two very popular emulators available on the App Store. And that is RetroArch and PPSSPP. Both very good programs. You should know what RetroArch is, but for those of you who don't, RetroArch is also a multi-emulator uh, program. But RetroArch supports far more than Delta does. So if we open up Delta and we go in here, you can see all of the emulators that it supports. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, Game Boy Color. Well, actually, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance. You can play all three, not just Game Boy Color and, and Game Boy Advance games. Um, and then Nintendo DS. I could have swore I saw uh, Sega Genesis on here at one point, but I could be wrong. But anyway, those are the only ones that are supported right now. And the developer says that there's more to come. So, RetroArch, on the other hand, if you go to load cores, you got all of these. I'm not gonna sit here and list every last one of them because there are multiple. Some of them are the same console, just a different emulator, but still. You get several in here that you can choose from. The one that we are going to do today is the PSP. Because that one is the easiest to set up. So I'm gonna just reconnect my controller here real quick. Alright, so we got my switch controller connected. And then we're gonna open up PPSSPP. And as you can see, I have been playing a couple of different games. Actually, that was supposed to be another one. I guess I didn't put it in the recent area. But I'm going to show you guys how to set this up and how to get your games to show up because this one I don't think has access to the iCloud so if you have any ROMs and stuff on the iCloud you're gonna have to move them onto your device and it goes without saying oops, excuse me you can do this on a 64 gig uh, 
iPhone or iPad, but I would highly recommend you get a 128 or higher so you can have, make sure you have enough space. So, initially, you're not going to have what I have, obviously. You're just going to have this one with the PSP folder and then uh, a bunch of empty space. So I'm going to show you what you can do. And we're going to get the other stuff set up. So, what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a controller connected because if you're using this on the iPad you're not going to want to use touch controls it is doable I've seen people do it but it's just a lot easier if you use a controller and we're going to go to settings and in here you have a couple of different settings that you can change. If you go to back end, you only have OpenGL available. You don't have uh, Vulkan or anything like that. And the reason is, is because as of right now, uh, JIT is not supported. So, That's a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, a bit of a bummer, if I can speak English. Second is your resolution scaling. So times one is basically your default resolution. You can also do auto if you want. Uh, times four, as you can see, is uh, 1080p times eight is 4K, and you can go all the way up to times 10 if you want, if your device can support it. So I've got mine set for 1080p. I think that should, that's enough for me. You can also enable or disable software rendering. I wouldn't recommend it. Because if I remember correctly, it makes the emulator significantly slower. But it does say slow but accurate. You can do display layout and effects. I haven't messed around with that one too much, so uh, that's going to be a new thing. Um, you can also enable or disable uh, frame skipping. So some games work a little bit better if you have frame skipping enabled, and other games wor uh, work a lot better without it. So. Some games you'll come across, uh, you might want to put frame skipping on at, at least one. And then if you do that, then uh, it should function properly. But if you are able to turn it off and still play it, I would recommend doing that because that makes it uh, closer to 60 FPS for the games that support 60 FPS. And then, pretty much all of these other settings, I just leave at its default because I I haven't had a need to change them yet. So um, you can experiment with these if you want. If you come across a game, uh, if you come across a game that's having issues, you can you can experiment with the rest of these settings. But uh, for the most part, you can leave these at default and be able to navigate just fine. Uh, next one down is your controls. It's very simple. 
the set of controls. You go to control mapping and you have a list of buttons that you can uh, map to whatever buttons you want. If you don't want the default buttons there, you can hit clear all and, and start from a uh, clean slate. But if you don't mind them there, then you can just tap the button or the little plus icon and add another input. So that's pretty self-explanatory there. Um, there's also some other settings in here for the controls that you can mess around with. I don't mess with any of this stuff because uh, there's really no need for me to do so. Uh, audio, you shouldn't have to change anything at all for the audio. I don't care. What platform I'm on, I have never really had any issues with the audio. Except for maybe Citra. Citra, Citra is a special case, okay? But uh, yeah, I've never really had any issues with uh, the audio as far as this emulator is concerned. Or genuinely any other emulator except for Citra, which is the exception. Let's go get out of here. Um, networking, I have not figured out how to get this to work yet. But once I do, I will do a in-depth uh, tutorial on how to get it up and running. I'm gonna do both the, uh, the PC version and the mobile version. And because uh, most of these settings are the same across every platform. You should be able to follow along just fine when I do do the tutorial. Uh, then you got tools, which you shouldn't really have to mess with these at all. And then you got system, which, uh, there's some customization options in here for like uh, the background and uh, various stuff like that. Like you can change the language, uh, you can enable or disable uh, UI sound. Which I think that one's new because I don't think I've ever seen, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen that. Okay, so that's just for the navigation of the menus. Alright, let's go turn turn that back off. <laughs> uh, then you got um, UI background animation. So you can choose uh, you can choose various different options for that. I might go I might go with this one because that, that one's more PSP-esque. And then you got different themes that you can choose from. I'm gonna put mine on dark. I think you can install more themes. I'm not 100% sure on that one. I will get back to you on that one when I find out if that's possible or not. Um, but yeah, everything else in here, you really don't need to be touching. The top panel is really the only one I would recommend messing around with, unless you know what you are doing. But once you have all of that set up, you are pretty much good to go. And you can start playing your games. So 
this is the re the recent page. And these three games up here, which there should be four, I don't know why there's three. Uh, these three games up here are the ones that I've played recently. And what's cool about this, about the uh, ESP emulator, is if you're using a controller and you highlight a game that you're playing, or that you're trying to play, it actually shows the uh, the wallpaper for that game, just like it would if it was on the actual PSP. So that's actually pretty cool. Now, to add games, you just go over to the games tab. And what I've been doing is I've been putting all of my games inside of the PPSSPP folder. But you don't actually have to do that. If you want to make a dedicated uh, a dedicated folder for it, you can do that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go. Is it gonna let us actually leave this folder? I don't think it is. Okay, so scratch that. Scratch what I just said. That one. That was a mistake on my part. Um, okay, so if you're on Android or PC, that you can you can navigate to another folder. I think uh, on iOS and iPad, uh, it's limited to its own folder. So. Since we downloaded the game, we can go back here, and as you can see, our game is done. And what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to. I'm gonna uh, copy this and then we're gonna take it to our uh, extraction folder. We're gonna stick it in here. And then we're gonna go an app called Unzip. I have three different ones on here, but, uh, but I wasn't sure which one it was that I used the most. So I just got all three. And then here is our game that we just added. So we just click on that. Unzip. And just wait a minute. Then we close that, go back to our file manager, and there's our game right there. So we're gonna copy this, and I'm gonna come back and delete these later. And then we're gonna go to our PPSSPP folder and stick the game in here. And then once you do that, you can go back to the PSP, uh, the PSP emulator. And then you hit the refresh button. And there's our game right there, our new game. And then you just select it. I used to watch 
The Simpsons. Quite a bit. Back in the day. So with this game, as you can see, it is not the best frame rate, right? but it's still playable, I mean it is a PSP game, I'm trying not to die. So yeah, it does indeed work. And I think it would be smoother if we did have jits, but we don't. And this is the uh, sub menu, so you can actually uh, create uh, save states if you want, which is actually pretty cool. So we're actually gonna create one right now, actually, if it'll let me. Okay, yeah, there we go. Let's go to a different game. We'll do Sonic Rivals. That's a fun game. I actually like this game. It's a, it's a little difficult, but once you get the once you get the hang of it, it's not that bad. And we'll just go to free play. As you can see, this one works real good. And I'm gonna show you what a major difference uh, the frame rate, or uh, frame skipping does for, the, for this game in particular. So we're gonna go into settings. We're gonna go to frame skipping. And we're gonna, I'm gonna just put it on one. Okay. 
Now, as you can see, now it looks a lot more choppy. And in my opinion, not as appealing to play. So that's why with this particular game, you may want to uh, set it for no frame skipping. And just for giggles, let's go up to number two. I'm actually kind of curious. Oh my God. Yeah, that makes it even more unplayable. Holy cow. Look at that. That's like watching a slideshow. All right, so let's go back down to zero. And there we go, now it's playable again. So yeah, um, the other cool thing is that I like about this as well, and, and I almost forgot about it until just now, is that each game, you can have a, a particular setup for each game. So if you go to your recents page, and then you highlight the game that you want to modify. And uh, for me, it would be pressing the X button, which would be triangle on the PSP. Um, you get this little menu. And within this menu, you have an option that says create game config. So you can actually uh, configure this game, this specific game to work how you want it to, which I actually really like. You can also delete your save data if you have any. Delete the game. I don't know why you would do that, but I mean, that's an option too. Uh, remove from recent. Again, don't know why you would do that. And then you got use UI background and then uh, calculate CRC, whatever that means. I've never messed with that one. So yeah, if you go to go to uh, create game config then it'll give you a new option what is it it'll, it'll give you the option to uh, go to game settings and then from here if I was to change this to say for example 4k okay and then we go back and then we go to our normal settings look it's still set for 1080p so it doesn't affect the overall settings so just bear that in mind so if you have a particularly uh troublesome game don't forget that you can also you can just use game config 
and set it up so you don't mess up uh, other games in the process. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna bring this back down to 1080p. And then same thing with the frame rate. If you set it to uh, specific frame skipping, it won't affect the rest of it. So I really love that. And other than that, that is pretty much it. I don't have anything else. There is a, uh, a homebrew section. So if you want to test it out without actually getting any games, you can. There's a PPSSPP uh, homebrew, homebrew store. Which is pretty cool. It's got a couple of different, uh, couple of different things that you can take a look at. PSP flower. What the freak? And now we have our homebrew. I think. There we go. So you gotta click on it with your with your finger. Roll it, that's cool. So yeah. Uh, exit out of this. And now since we played it, it's now on our list. So yeah, you got your actual games that you can add, and then you got homebrew that you can download which again is pretty cool so yeah i think i have covered not everything i can think of um if you do have any questions about this feel free to comment down below and i will try to help you to the best of my abilities um, if you are an Android user, you do have some uh, slightly different settings, but I can try to help you to, to the best of my abilities, because I do have it on PC as well. Um, but yeah, uh, really awesome that we have these emulators officially available on iOS devices now. I wonder if you could actually get this on the Apple TV. Now that would be freaking awesome, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, let me know what you guys would like to see become available next in the Apple Store or the App Store. Uh, a lot of people want to see Dolphin, but that one requires JIT, most definitely. Uh, some other people want to see the P a PS2 emulator, 
again, which is probably going to require JIT. Me personally, I would love to see a standalone DS emulator or a PS1 emulator. I think personally that would be really, really cool. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. So again, thanks for watching. I appreciate any support that you give. It means the world. And yeah, like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I will help you out to the best of my abilities. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.